Ramon Bueso, Genesis, the project. In Gordo. I keep thinking like she had like a mariachi band or something like that, playing some kind of weird fanfare, just for actually being able to get that entire ridiculously long name out. But yeah, this is uh, probably one of the longest names of boutique cigars, and my camera does not want to focus for some reason. Go on, I'll be good. Anyway, the old Gordo 6x60, firm pack, tight seams, big, huge double cap. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cut and lit, and uh, I may have to punch cut this. I've been having pretty good uh, luck actually getting a decent cut with my Z car, but it is not built for these big, huge ring gauge cigars, which is kind of a shame. But take a punch cutter, two or three bites, you should be okay. All right, so that said, I'll get back to you after the cigar's gone. Okay, so, got it lit. I was actually managed to get a pretty decent cut. I'm kind of having to hold my phone a little awkward here because my shoulder's been giving me problems on my left arm, so I'm pulling in my right hand, which is extremely awkward and just <laughs> a total pain in the butt. So I may just go ahead and have to <clears throat> kind of just bite it and try not to screw up my shoulder. Uh, for the rest of the video. Anyway, <laughs> point aside, straight off the bat, real heavy notes of coffee, cocoa, slight pepper. Very, very good start. Also a slight earthiness. My past experience with these has been a little on the dry side, but never anything so bad as to really leave you totally parched. I had one cigar once that uh, let me with just absolute dry food. It was absolutely terrible. This is not that, thankfully. All right, so excellent start so far. Awkward camera grip, well, phone grip. <laughs> but beyond that, I will go ahead and smoke this down to an inch and get back to you after that. How long my shoulder will be about. The predominant flavor has been predominantly a coffee, or like a dark, slightly bitter espresso, and a nice echo in the background, but also with a, th a slight touch of a toastiness in the end. The pepper that uh, was originally on the light died after about two puffs and mellowed up very, very nicely. Retrohale has been kind of just a reinforcement of the coffee with a slightly toastier nose, but uh, beyond that, yeah. Good base tobacco that lingers on the finish. Uh, overall, though, very, very uh, confirmed, definite coffee espresso note. Burn line has been going relatively well. That's one of the problems with these gordos is occasionally you get wonky burns just because of that there's just so much surface area in order to cover. But if you smoke them right, in the you don't typically have to worry too much about that. And I'm probably going to have one hell of a cramp in my shoulder after this, but... See you later. Alright, maybe this will go down to about the halfway point and get back to you after that. Or whenever the ash flops off, whenever, you know, whichever comes first. Alright, so the ash just came off. Didn't quite make it all the way to the halfway point, but a nice little gust of wind came up, which is probably screwing with my mic right about now. And, uh... Yeah, basically made it to about a halfway point. So, construction, as you can see, is top notch. Flavors have been pretty consistent, pretty hardcore, uh, clean tobacco note with uh, the, the coffee note still uh, lingering. The initial cocoa burst uh, is really died down, and uh, the retro hail has been pretty much identical. I've also noticed that I have not been getting the dry mouth that I've gotten on previous uh, iterations of this. Yes, thank you for using it. Keep going. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, burn's been good. Draw's been excellent. Flavors have been nice. Uh, there's actually a lot going on in this mode, so trying to pick out one specific flavor can be a little different. The overlying, uh, you know, the, the main notes that you're going to find uh, at least that I found so far have been coffee, clean tobacco, and the slight earthiness. 
they've been pretty good. So they've been excellent. Up to, uh, eventually, I will remember how to think. Been pretty good all the way up to this point. And so far, doesn't seem to be changing that fact. Alright, so I'm going to keep going to about where a normal band would be, which would be about, I guess, about here. The actual band's a little small on this, which is kind of nice. Sometimes you find that uh, you see cigar bands being almost like a billboard strapped around your cigar. Sometimes they're almost not even it's not even there. Some cigars don't even have bands. And it's the Rocky Patel Edge. But uh, it's probably the first big name cigar they had that they had it didn't have a band, a band on it at all. And here comes the bicyclist. And I keep smoking down this and uh, get back to the band. Okay, so I know this isn't at the band yet. But I feel that what just happened warrants a little bit of commentary. The amount of videos I've making, been making on this exact same bike path, I've not gotten a single rude comment until just now. This is also one of the reasons why I don't like having people just randomly show up in my shot. I'm just walking along, smoke my cigar. There's some dude running. Out of nowhere. He says, and I quote, fucking annoying when you're running. Well, congratulations, sir. You have the right to be annoyed. I'm not doing anything illegal. Thank you for your input. Now, shut up and go fuck yourself. Seriously. I don't usually get rude comments. I bet most people are actually more interested in talking to me, especially if they, have a, you know, if they already smoke. But every so often you find that one butthurt idiot that, uh, just hops onto that anti-smoking bandwagon and just has to say something. <sighs> anyway, I think I may see about uh, starting to do my reviews at night. Why? Everybody's asleep. That's pretty much it for this. I'm going to keep going on this. I will give you a quick update, though. The flavor so far, especially in the nose, has taken on a slight fruitiness. Um, I want to say like a slight plum, uh, along with a very earthy tobacco cool. So far I can say you'd probably want to pair this with like uh, a tray of like fresh plums, real dark cherries, a nice coffee, or perhaps a really peaty scotch. Uh, you might be able to get away with a, a, a very fruity liqueur, like you can find like a plum schnapps or something like that, or just, you know, some kind of really either fruit infused or real coffee heavy uh, liqueur. PD Scotch is always, always a good choice though. Well, anyway, that's about all I got for this one as far as this particular update goes. I'm going to keep smoking this down until I actually get the band and hopefully I'm not going to run into any more assholes. Alright. See you at the band. Alright, final update on the Ramon Whistle, Genesis the Project. That is kind of a mouthful to say. Anyway, back down to the, right about down to the band here. The band actually has uh, been kind of sliding around a little bit. Which kind of leads to an interesting point. When do you take off the band? But basically, it all comes down to the actual band and the cigar. If the general rule of thumb is basically if the band rotates freely, you can take it off whenever you like. If it's kind of stuck, keep it on as long as possible. Because it's one of those older style cigars, something like you'd find from, well, basically just one of the old classic brands, my Cristo Plum, something like that. They tend to use just a strip of paper with the same glue that they use to keep the cap on. And if you're not careful, that glue can stick to the wrapper. And if you take it off too early, you end up tearing the wrapper, which can be disastrous. So, if it rotates clean, which this one does, take it off whenever you like. Otherwise, keep it on used to be uh, kind of a prestige thing, just showing off, look, I'm smoking this big expensive cigar, you know. Anymore, that's just kind of rude, uh, because, you know, it's like, you're basically throwing money in everybody's face. Beyond that, though, the flavors have been pretty consistent uh, since the last update. Uh, slight increase in the earthiness, very, very muted fruitiness in the background, no spice, no harshness, absolutely lovely cigar all the way through. A little bit of dryness. So I would definitely recommend uh, smoking these with a drink. Uh, strength, as far as nicotine strength, none. Which is 
perfectly fine for me because I do not like praying to the porcelain god. <sighs> anyway, I'm not really expecting a whole lot between here and uh, the nub because it, uh, it's, it's fortunately it's not getting hot at all. It is kind of getting a little warm. And that's one of the things about these big ones. If you uh, get down to around about where the band would be or a little bit before that, you still basically have enough tobacco to make a robusto. So you can pretty much smoke it about like a normal cigar from a little bit past the halfway point back. Other than that, you know, it's like I'm not really expecting a whole lot of change. If something does change, I'll add that in uh, in a text in the video later. Predominantly, though, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Excellent cigar by all accounts. Ramon Bueso is one of the top boutique brands, and with good reason. They are excellent cigars. Definitely recommend these. Uh, you might want to try these in like a Toro or Corona, maybe a good Robusto size. Uh, you probably get a little bit more intensity in the flavor. That said, the Gordos are expert, uh, expertly very wonderfully blended. I'm walking around, it's a little hot, so I'm kind of breathing a little bit. <laughs> also, I'm hoping I'm not going to get a serious shoulder cramp from this. Alright, so that's pretty much all I got for this. If you like this video or any other video, like, favorite, subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your friends' friends, tell your friends' uncles, cousins, second cousin, you know, brothers, uncles, second cousin, twice removed. Every little bit uh, would definitely be a major favor to me. Beyond that, though, that's pretty much all I got. So, I'm going to go ahead and see you next time. Cheers. Fuck. No buts here. The rabbits are getting cancer. Oh. My weasley little black heart sheds tiny little tar-covered tears for all the mite flea and tick-infested jackrabbits of the front range. <sighs> you can officially kiss my ass.